I trust you're doing well. You're watching RTV News live from Kigali. I'm Ethan Tashabia. Before we indulge into the details, congratulations to the winner of Miss Rwanda 2021. But also congratulations uh, to all the finalists who made it uh, to the final, the grand finale today. They are all winners indeed. Let's look at what is making headlines in the matters locally. On the International Day of the Francophonie, the Secretary General of the International Organization of the Francophonie, Louise Mushichuabo, has called on women in the member countries to be stronger and hopeful for the future despite the threats of COVID-19 pandemic. Jen Motoni kicks off tonight's edition with this report. While the International Francophonie Day comes as the world faces a COVID-19 pandemic, the Secretary General of the International Organization of Francophonie, Louise Mushichiwawo, says the courage which women have portrayed during these difficult times is what has fueled us to specifically celebrate them on this day. C'est à vous. As the Secretary General of the International Organization of Francophonie, I would like to dedicate this day to the women in the Francophonie community who have endured the effects of this pandemic as they have also been felt in the health sector, economic and political sector across the world. You have managed to strive even with the losses you faced in the small businesses by coming up with innovations through which you've used in providing a sustainable well-being to your families. Et parfois vos communautés. Est-ce que l'égalité femme et homme est un droit fondamental? Some of the young French students and volunteers that were sent to Rwanda by the Rwanda Francophonie Organization with the aim of teaching the language to young people say they have come to a better understanding of the importance of speaking more than one language. It is a really good opportunity opportunity to write a magazine and it helps other people to read what we can do and it is the parents helps us to develop our magazines so that we can we can know both languages of English English and French. It gives us more confidence. Our parents are very proud of us. It makes us feel as if we want to continue and make it better. It's, it gives us it gives us much happiness to see our names in a book that is going to be published and if in everybody in the world can see it. Teaching Children French is a francophonie program supported in Rwanda by the French Association of Journalists OPFR. We are celebrating with uh, OEF uh, this day and one of our activities was the production of this kind of uh, newspaper written by very young children almost 11 between 11 and 15 years so these are the the guys who wrote these this uh, newspaper and we have very interesting topics within this uh, newspaper so uh, our priority is to train francophone journalists first of all in their everyday work and then train and promote French wherever it is used in everyday life. The International Francophonie Day was also celebrated in the Rwanda Parliament virtually. The Senate President, Dr. Auguste Iamuremye, says the essence of Francophonie organization is not only about the usage of the French language. The future of Francophonie is not just based on language, but shared values. The language is just a way to help us achieve this. Rwanda has achieved so many things in terms of development, while also looking forward to learn more from other countries. The 2021 International Day of the Francophonie was celebrated under a theme, Francophonie Woman, Resilient Woman. Honorable Mukandere Efigeni says it is equally important for this theme to be taken seriously in Rwanda as significant progresses have been made in terms of defending the women's rights. In Rwanda, enough laws have been put in place to defend a woman's rights. We want to work with other countries to make sure that women are empowered and supported while facing challenges throughout life. 
On this day, a Rwandan woman who also has a French nationality, Beata Umbiei Maris, was awarded a prize called Le Prix des Cinq Continents de la Francophonie for a book she wrote called Tous tes enfants dispersés, which means all children scattered. Research conducted by the National Institute of Statistics showed that due to COVID, or rather due to the country's investment in technology-related infrastructure, this sector grew by 29% last year, and service delivery has been better as compared to other services that were affected by the pandemic. Gloria Mutesi has more. In various recreational places across Kigali City, various people are seen relaxing while using the free Wi-Fi phone in these places. It's an initiative that the city administration put in place to make it easier for those who want to relax and work from such places. Some of these people include students, artists, among other people who say they are grateful for such investments. We are grateful to the city of Kigali that established this free Wi-Fi zone. It is a good initiative that we hope reaches everywhere across the country. Apart from students who use it, there are other people that use the internet for various other reasons as well. We are utilizing the internet well as students as we are preparing for the national exams. We are currently studying how to convert binaries into decimals thanks to free internet. The National Institute of Statistics of Rwanda has said that while all services were affected last year because of the COVID-19 pandemic, the technology sector rose by 29%. Alex Nare, the CEO of the Rwanda ICT Chamber under the Private Sector Federation, says this is something to be grateful for. We usually see that various sectors such as tourism, agriculture, among others, are big contributors to the country's economy. But not so many traders in these sectors have embraced technology. But once they have, we hope that this will help us increase productivity than before when they weren't fully utilizing the internet. Dr. Ernest Nsabima, another Director General of the Rwanda Utilities and Regulatory Authority, says a lot was invested, including towers to improve service delivery. When you've seen all these issues, with the as with service providers such as MTN, Airtel and others to be able to rectify all these issues that come with internet usage. And the other thing that is being done in Kigali and across the country where people are expressing issues of connectivity and poor coverage, there are still places that need towers. This year we had to construct 45 more towers across the country so to see that this issue of connectivity is resolved. The country's investment in technology has seen more than 33,220 virtual meetings being held in one year's period and on average each meeting lasted about an hour and 45 minutes according to webex from march 2020 to march this year the online meetings have lasted about 3.840 million minutes in 2018 the internet coverage countrywide were 35 percent and it is currently at 98 percent subscriptions have also risen from 4.7 million people that year to 7.9 million people by 2021 gloria mutesi reporting for rtv news Cross-district and province commuters have pledged uh, to strengthen measures uh, to contain COVID-19 pandemic. They share similar sentiments with public transport operators. This follows the reopening of the inter-district movements. Gabi Muvunyi reports. It has been five days since the inter-district and provincial travel restrictions were lifted. We visited Nyabugogo bus station to observe how passengers are content with these new measures. Washing hands is mandatory in order to enter the bus station. Some of the passengers at Nyabugogo station say they appreciate the lift on the travel ban between the provinces, but are still concerned to some extent because of the measures that are still in place. I had really missed my family. Now I'm glad I'll be able to get to see them. We are now following the COVID-19 guidelines, even when making our payments. We are now paying on mobile money. Before you enter the bus station, one has to wash their hands. Also, as you enter the bus, we sanitize our hands once more. Things are going well now. 
An hour and a half from Nyawogogo, the passengers reach Mohanga district. COVID-19 preventive protocols are strictly in place. The bus station employees express that they are facing some difficulties with mobile phone transactions, but they say there is definitely some change they are seeing. When someone comes with cash, we tell them to step aside first and explain to them why it is better to pay with mobile money. But for now, a good number have started paying with Momo, which is good. As you can see, passengers have to first wash their hands. There are also some public address systems located in the bus station to constantly remind the passengers of the guidelines. Provincial and district trips are now allowed to be made, except for trips to and from Bugesera, Nyanza and Kisagara districts. The COVID-19 cases in the country stand at 200 positive cases, 240 recoveries and a death toll of four. Gabi Muvunyi for RTV. Now, the Amateka series is a project that was started by a group of random community based in Australia with the name of sharing knowledge with the rest of the Rwandan youth across the globe about the history of Rwanda. Earlier today, uh, Jen Mutoni, my colleague here, spoke to Linda Iriza, the founder of Amateka Series, and they discussed more about that. That's a great question. Um, so the whole idea, the idea actually came to mind in January 2020. And um, it was just an idea because I was very curious about uh, learning about Rwandan history because one, I didn't get a chance to study in Rwanda. So there's a lot that I missed out on. And I was just become, I was getting at an age where I, where I had a lot of questions and, and I didn't have a lot of answers. So then I found out that a lot of other young Rwandans within my community here in Perth were feeling the same. We were asking questions about our ancestors. How did people live before um, colonization? How did people live during colonization? And how is it affecting um, us as Rwandans today? According to you personally, why do you think it is important for these stories to be told or to be shared? I think it's really important because I think our ancestors, those who came before us, have a lot of knowledge um, that they've left for us. And a lot of that knowledge is actually not being passed down or it's being disrupted. So I think it's really important that we find ways to actually preserve this knowledge and archive it so that therefore that one, we are knowledgeable and able to pass it on to the next generation. And two, we actually have something that we can look back at and have it as a source of um, incredible Rwandan history that's accessible to anybody from anywhere as long as you have, I guess, internet access, which is also something we're trying to work um, beyond and see how the, the programs that we're creating can be experienced even with people who don't have internet access. What have you done to safeguard the, the Rwandan history because it's pretty much uh, sensitive? So, so far, what have you done or as uh, this series or this project to protect or safeguard the history of Rwanda? The biggest thing that we've done and we've been lucky to do is that we've ha we have a really amazing team that sort of... Um, guides us. So we work really, really closely with the Rwandan community here in Perth, RCA Perth. We, we are also supported by the Rwandan embassy in Singapore. So there are people that we really work closely with to guide us. So then our, our knowledge and our history and the, the people that we're learning from um, are bringing in really crucial and truthful knowledge about our country and our history as well. And so that's why we're very we're very um, intentional when it comes to the people that we are working with and the people who are, who are guiding us in the process. Uh, as someone who is uh, abroad or outside Rwanda, uh, how do you correlate your knowledge on Rwandan history with the youth here in Rwanda? Yes, so that has actually been one of the most beautiful, beautiful experiences. Um, so the, the way we're currently doing it now is that we are connecting with Rwanda News through the virtual conferences that we are having. So a lot of it actually, like 50% of the people who join us are Rwandans who are currently living in Rwanda. And it's, that has been a really incredible experience because it feels like you're in a, um, a classroom 
with so many people from different places and that that opportunity that we missed out on of studying in Rwanda is actually in a strange way happening virtually. So Linda, as we wrap up this interview, what would you like to tell the youth here in Rwanda or there in Australia or around the world? Yes, um, I think the one thing I really want to tell other young people is it, it's also a message to myself is to really um, look at the work that our ancestors have done and really um, look at it as something very important to your story, to your own personal story. So we all have a place um, and a role to play when it comes to archiving our ancestors' stories. And we should really honor them. And a lot of there's different ways that we can honor them. And one of the ways is through Amateka series. And we invite anyone who's interested in Rwandan history to come and join us on this journey, um, to stay curious with us, to create with us and continue this movement forward. Um, and we're very excited for the future and the work that we are going to be able to create. We cannot go beyond that. On behalf of the entire news production team, many thanks for your company tonight. Stay well and safe. I'm Ethan Tashabia. Bye for now.